Perth enters an emergency three-day lockdown. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because, well, Perth has entered an emergency three-day lockdown. We're going to have a look at an article from news.com and a few other things that I'd like to discuss. Now, first I want to start off on a positive note because a lot of people may be scared or worried. You know, let's take a bit of a positive perspective when we're discussing these things. So, here we have, this is from Johns Hopkins, their map, uh, discussing the latest uh, case numbers and, and results from COVID. And here we have Western Australia. They have had 280, uh, sorry, 982 cases and nine deaths. We can see here the incident rate is 37.33 per 100,000 people. The fat case fatality ratio is only at 0 0.92. So their fatality ratio is very low. And some of the worst performing states in Australia is Tasmania at 5.56 and Victoria at 4%. Now that's because obviously they're probably having an A, all the population where they had a large number of fatalities, unfortunately. And I mean, that's the sad part of life, guys. When if, you've, if you haven't had family members in an aged care home, you don't realize how many people actually pass quite frequently in those environments. It's just what happens. But here is the positive thing, everyone, because you've got to realize over 23,000 people have recovered in Australia from this illness. Okay, so many more people are recovering than are succumbing to it. It's not the dystopian zombie fantasy that everyone wants. So just keep that in your mind because there are going to be some people who are scared and the media just wants to ha ramp up the, the fear factor because it gets clicks, it gets eyeballs, and it gets views. So many people have recovered. Don't let it, don't let the fear get to you. But nonetheless, Perth has entered a three-day lockdown. Let's have a look at this article that's discussing it. So the WA Premier mandated a lockdown in the Perth and Peel regions after a wave of COVID cases as other states slammed the borders shut. Now, I can't say I'm surprised. This seems to be just the default response to whenever, you know, well, we've had it for even one case here in Queensland. They're just terrified. West Australian Premier Mark McGowan has mandated a three-day lockdown in the Perth and Peel regions over the long weekend after a wave of new COVID cases. So there goes Anzac Day. The emergency announcements comes amid a COVID-19 outbreak at Perth's uh, Mercure Hotel, with a Victorian man testing positive in Melbourne today after completing 14 days of quarantine at the WA Hotel. A pregnant woman and her four-year-old daughter have also tested positive after their stay, having contracted the virus from an, an infected couple who had returned from India and was staying, was staying in a room opposite them. Okay, so how are they doing this? Was she just staying there normally? Uh, are they? Why are they having like floors, which is just for quarantine people? Oh, well, there you go. You know what? May, maybe, uh, maybe Palaszczuk's suggestion of using the mining camps as a, as places for quarantine isn't such an absurd suggestion. At least then, if you're in these dongers, you know you can. If you've got some empty dongers, spread them out even more. From midnight on Friday. Until midnight on Monday, April 26th, residents need to stay in Perth and Peel and will not be able to leave unless they have an exemption. Other states in New Zealand have now introduced new border restrictions on people traveling to and from the regions. There will be four reasons to leave your house, Mr. McGowan said in a press conference. Those are work, because you can't work from home or remotely, shopping for essentials like groceries medicine and necessary supplies so you could go shopping for groceries everyone and i bet you i bet you people just went nuts i just bet you they went nuts again and it's probably the toilet paper medical or healthcare needs including compassionate requirements and looking after the vulnerable an exercise with a maximum of four people limited to one hour per day he revealed that the melbourne man who has since tested positive may have been infectious for five days 
for a five-day period in the Perth community, and had passed it on to one of his, his close contacts in the WA capital. The Premier said the man, who was in his 50s, arrived in Perth on the 3rd of April on flight SQ223 from Shanghai. His room at the Mercure Hotel was close to the other cases recorded in the, in the hotel, a couple from India and a family from the UK. WA has now released detailed contact tracing information of venues visited by the Victorian man, with people who have been uh, been to any of the locations on the listed date and time told to get tested and isolated at home until a negative result is received. Well, there you go. Absolute chaos it calls. I guess if you're running out of food, you just go in there. It's three days. <laughs> three days. Um, I guess it's no different to when you've got a public holiday and then everyone just goes nuts. And maybe that's it. It's combined three days and a public holiday, so they're all going crazy. Shop. Uh, shopping for essentials like groceries, medicine, and necessary supplies will be allowed during the three-day lockdown, but that hasn't stopped a panic buying frenzy. There were, there were chaotic scenes on Friday afternoon after the announcement as shoppers swarmed supermarkets across Perth, loading their trolleys with goods like toilet paper, rice, and pasta. <laughs> well, I mean, ill-prepared preppers, but they're still prepping. Uh, prepping preparing with rice and pasta guys you know get that get that wheat there just in case i'd rather prep with meat you know police officers were even called in to monitor the situation at some places oh i bet you'd love being, doing that as a cop meanwhile outrage was building after wa's mining companies were tipped off about the snap lockdown before it was announced to the public News of the impending lockdown emerged before Mr. McGowan's press conference, courtesy of advice sent by WA's Chamber of Minerals and Energy to the state's mining companies. Uh, why are you outraged? The mining companies are keeping your state going, guys, okay? So don't complain. Some Twitter users expressed anger and confusion at mining companies being told about the lockdown before the rest of the state. Yeah, it's because they're more important than a random Twitter person. Uh, don't, don't, <laughs> come on. So that's why you need to have friends that work in the mine so when they find out, you can find out. So Mark McGowan has a private consultation with the mining companies before the general public, one tweeted. Twiggy Forest is more powerful than McGowan in WA, so no surprise the mining companies have been consulted first, another said. Other states have shut borders. Victoria has declared the Perth and Peel region's red zones under the state's traffic light travel permit system effective at 2 a.m. on Saturday. Victorians returning home from these WA regions have to quarantine at home for 14 days and non-Victorians will have to go into a hotel quarantine until a return flight is arranged. Oh, fantastic. So these, these hotels are working out so well, aren't they? <laughs> the state's chief health officer said anyone in Victoria who has been in the Perth and Peel regions between April 17 and 23rd must isolate Get a test within 72 hours and isolate until negative results. The updates followed warnings earlier on Friday about potential exposure to the man with COVID-19 on a Qantas flight to Melbourne and at Melbourne Airport. Passengers on Qantas flight 778 from Perth to Melbourne on Wednesday, April 21st, have been told to get tested and isolate for 14 days regardless of their results. Health authorities are already contact tracing about 250 passengers who were on the flight. Oh, fantastic. Anyone who visited the Qantas Terminal, Terminal 1 at Melbourne Airport, between 7pm and 7.30pm on Wednesday, the 21st of April, must get tested and isolate until they get a negative result. The department said the f that further locations may be classified as exposure sites as investigations continue. The Victorian man was contacted as he was coming off the plane as a primary, a primary close contact, said Victorian Health um, Minister Martin Foley. He was picked up at the airport by his spouse and, return, and returned dr directly home to his residential location in the eastern suburbs where he lives with three household contacts, his spouse and two children. Those contacts are all currently in isolation after being tested and will receive the results in the next day. New South Wales health teams were deployed at Sydney Airport to commence screening of flights from Perth. After news, the West Australian capital would enter a snap lockdown. Those arriving in Sydney from WA after from midnight must complete a declaration form available from Services New South Wales website, which confirms they have not attended a venue of concern. Passengers who have been to any of the locations of concerns listed by the WA government today will be told to immediately be tested and self-isolate. 
We urge all travellers who are arriving from Perth and the Peel region since April 17 to check the WA website and immediately follow the actions outlined there. If they have if they have attended any of those venues identified at the time listed, they must also contact New South Wales Health immediately, the department said in a statement. The New South Wales will reflect the stay-at-home restrictions that apply to WA. The Queensland government said anyone in the state, so anyone in the state who had been in the Perth or Peel region since April 17 must get tested, self-isolate and comply with WA's lockdown restrictions from tonight. So what do you mean? So if you're from, you're from Victoria, uh, you're from WA, from that period, you're in Queensland, then you must comply with what WA is saying. Is that what they're saying? They will have to remain self-isolated, either at home or arrange accommodation until 2 a.m. on April 27th, as announced by the WA government. So even when you're, you're fleeing WA, you still need to do what they say. South Australia said anyone who visited any of the locations listed on the West Australian Department of Health website at the specified date and time should get tested for COVID-19 as soon as possible and isolate until they get a negative result. They should also get tested again on day 5 and day 13. The NT said people arriving from Perth and Peel regions from midnight will have to go into mandatory quarantine. In addition, anyone who was in Perth and Peel regions and arrived in the NT since April 17th or have arrived before midnight tonight will have to get uh, be tested and self-isolate until they get a negative result. Flights between New Zealand and Western Australia have been put on pause pending further advice from the WA government. A flight due to, leave, due to leave Perth for Auckland tonight has been cancelled following the announcement of the three-day lockdown, and there will be no flights tomorrow. Air New Zealand flight NZ176 from Perth to Auckland this evening has been cancelled due to a three-day lockdown in WA. An Air New Zealand spokesperson said, Customers are being given the option to rebook, put the flight into credit, or receive a refund if they've purchased a refundable ticket. There are no Air New Zealand's to or from Perth tomorrow. We expect to be able to provide further clarity on the impact of Sunday's return service tomorrow afternoon. New Zealand authorities said Kiwis who are affected by today's announcement should follow the advice of WA authorities. The pause on flights comes days after the long-awaited launch of quarantine-free travel between Australia and New Zealand. So the, the contact tracing locations have been released. If you've been to any of the below locations, you need to get tested. Uh, St. Catherine's College, Qantas Domestic Terminal, the College Dining Hall, City China Gardens, Good Fortune, Rose Duck, uh, Fortune Acupuncture Clinic, City Inn, uh, Kitchen Inn, Brentwood Deli, Bandrabo, uh, Star Family Medicine Practice, DB Dental, Leisure Fit Aquatic Center and the Sutherland Shopping Center. So, Perth has entered a, an emergency three-day lockdown. All the other states are responding to it. Now, here's another thing, just a consideration regarding reducing transmission and the effectiveness of these lockdowns. Because in the past, these uh, such a such restrictions, but were well argued against by epidemiologists. Now, I've done a video on this, and you can find it on my Odyssey channel, looking at the latest research analyzing the actual effectiveness of these lockdowns if they played a dominant role in reducing the transmission. I suggest you check it out. I'm, the video I haven't placed on the YouTube channel, because, well, YouTube is, let's say, concerned with the potential for charlatans putting out information and causing issues on their platform. Or and taking advantage of people. Whenever you have a situation like this where a lot of people are, are full of fear, they're going to be people trying to sell a snake oil cure or some rubbish like that. So I can appreciate where they're coming from. Even though this is based on uh, essentially mathematical research published in reputable journals, YouTube doesn't really appreciate those nuances. But check it out on Odyssey, everyone. If you haven't subscribed to me there, maybe now's the time. So... What are the solutions to this? Number one, don't let fear and media hype scare you guys. Think of the positives, okay? Think of how many people have gotten through this and are fine. Look at the risks and implement your own risk mitigation techniques. Do what you need to do to stay, stay safe. Look at what you can actually do to, well, limit your, your potential risks. Number one, I thought I'd be suggesting is take control of comorbidities that you can fix yourself. And here's one. 
your BMI is a fantastic indicator of potential higher hospitalization risk. And I would suggest this is probably going to be a wake-up call for a lot of people to become politically active, to realize the amount of authority we've handed over to our leaders. What's concerning is that these lockdowns become just the de facto response, people get conditioned to them, and people like the fact that their leaders are taking care of them. I saw that here in Queensland with our election. We had no difference in responses from the two political parties with the Premier. So there you have it, everyone. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I cobbled together here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us by joining the channel or support us by joining the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can help us with our share investments by signing up for Self Wealth, where we each get five free share trades, or for Stake, where you can buy partial shares in the US, and it, once you find your account, we'll each get a free trade. You can use independent reserve for your crypto trading. Unfortunately, I converted $7 of my LBC tokens over to Dogecoin, and now it's officially crashed. I'm sorry I did that, everyone, but I had to put that to an end. It's all me. All me. That's 7 bucks. We, you can buy our merch from Heiser Says. We have homemade pocket squares that Rachel made here featuring my Stein that I've got to find. I'm using my... my Bavarian Stein. I've got to find that the nice black one. Or you can support us using um, what is it? PayPal or Gold Pass from the Perth Mint. Take care. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. And uh, good luck to all the West Australians in Perth. Bye for now.